How do you buy a car in Spain? What is the process? How do you get insurance? Are inspections required? What about finding a mechanic? I'm going to answer all of those questions today. Hi, my name is Nicole. Welcome to my channel, Travel to Money. In this video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know about buying a car in Spain. I'll tell you my story, what the requirements are, how to go about maintenance, inspections, insurance, and more. Five years ago, I bought my first house in Spain. One of the cool things about visiting here was the rental car prices. They were insanely low. The cheapest cars I have ever rented in the entire world were here in Spain. I would go on Skyscanner, you can find a link to that in my bio, and I would rent cars for less than a dollar a day. Nuts, right? Well, the next year I was back in Spain with my best friend who had been traveling the world with me and we were going to be there for the holidays. I looked into car rentals and for the period of time we would be here, a car rental was going to cost around 600 euro. I thought to myself, I could buy a really old car for close to that price. I just really didn't want to spend 600 euro on a car rental. So I started shopping. I do a lot of shopping in Spain on Facebook Marketplace. Considering I don't always know where to go for different things, it's a great option for a foreigner to look for used items. Well, after doing quite a bit of looking, I found the car that I ended up purchasing, a 1999 Honda CRV that was relatively low in miles or kilometers in Spain, and it was in mint condition. The model of this CRV would have been the high end at the time that it was produced, electric windows, a sunroof, and more. It was a really good find for just 1,400 euro, and Hondas last forever. I knew that with the low miles on the car, I could get several years out of it. I was lucky that it was actually being sold by a used car dealer in Alicante. This meant that they would be handling the paperwork for me. My friend and I went to see the car and test drive it. There was one latch issue and one of the mirrors was broken. I still would have purchased it like that, but the dealer let me know that they would order the parts, have them installed, and then two days later, I could pick up the car. A lot of people in the US may not be familiar with an app called WhatsApp. It became so popular that several years ago, Facebook bought the app. It's an encrypted way to send messages or make audio or video calls via data. So this is how most people communicate when you travel overseas. It allows you to call people back home and to make calls or send messages to people from other countries without having to pay extra for phone calls or text messages. Yes, there are a lot of similar apps now, but I found that WhatsApp is the most commonly used around the world and definitely here in Spain. Now let's talk about necessary documents to buy a car in Spain. So I communicated with the car dealer via WhatsApp and would send him photos of documents he needed from me on WhatsApp as well. The two documents he needed were a photo of my passport as well as a title of registration from Town Hall, basically saying that I live in Pago. No, it doesn't mean that you need to be a resident in Spain, but you do have to show the deed to a house that you own or at least a one-year rental contract. For me, because I'm not a resident in Spain, I would not have been able to purchase a car before the purchase of my home in Spain. So you will go to your local town hall and get this free document that they will provide to you that shows that you are living in that area. Just take your deed and your passport with you when you go. The other thing you will need is your NIE, which is your tax identification number. But if you've purchased a home in Spain, you will already have your NIE. I read somewhere that you will also have to prove that you have a bank account in Spain, but I don't remember having to do that. Maybe that would be the case if you were taking out a loan. In any case, if you already own a home in Spain, you would have a bank account. You don't have to have the Spanish driver's license, but be sure to have your driver's license from your home country, as well as an international driver's permit. If you are from the US, to get your international driver's permit, just visit your local AAA office, take a passport-sized photo, fill out the required form, and pay $20. The IDP is good for one year. You don't have to pass any sort of written or driving test. It's just a very simple booklet you will keep with you that translates how to read your driver's license into 10 different languages. You may not have to show this at the time of a car purchase, but you will need these in order to drive legally in Spain. Now, let's briefly talk about purchasing a vehicle from a private seller. I've not done this before, but I asked some of my friends in Spain who have done this often, and I think they have some good advice. First, you'll want to ask the seller for ID and take pictures for your records. You'll need a contract of sale and then the logbook, which each car should have. Be sure that the name on the ID provided matches the name on the car registration. You'll need a transfer of ownership, which both of you need to sign. 
then you'll need an IVTM, which is the road tax document and should show that it has been paid in full for the current year. Lastly, you'll need the ITV receipt or card. This is the inspection that is required annually for most cars in Spain. For me, going through the dealer seemed to be so much easier, but I have friends that buy from private sellers all the time and it can also be pretty straightforward, even though it may sound like a lot. Now let's talk about car insurance. There may be lower car insurance options in Spain, but I ended up going with Abigate, a company based out of the UK. My friend and I were both on the policy for a while and that ran about 400 euro per year. I'm currently the only one on the policy and it runs me just under 300 euro per year. That is far less than what I pay in the US. I've only had to call them once. Unfortunately, I'm the dummy who left the lights on when I traveled to Spain last April and I was stranded about an hour away from home. I was able to reach out to Abigate and they called a service company to come and jump the car. The process was pretty seamless and it cost me nothing. Okay, now let's talk about getting an inspection for your vehicle. This is required annually on most vehicles, but if you are buying something other than a regular automobile, you may want to check the requirements. I've heard of some types of vehicles requiring an inspection every every six months and others that only require one every two years. Each region will have a website where you can book an ITV appointment online. If you don't live in Spain year round and your ITV expires while you are gone, it would be good to book an appointment before returning. If you have that appointment printed out, it will help you to avoid any tickets should you get pulled over for not having your ITV up to date. Once you book the appointment, you will need to go to the ITV station that you chose when you booked the appointment. Once you arrive, if it's anything like the process I went through, there will be multiple long lines of cars. Get into one of the lines. Someone will come by your car at some point and tell you to go inside to check in. You can just leave the car in the line until you are checked in and move it up once you return. Then you'll follow the line up until it's your turn for the inspection. You will give your paperwork to the inspector. They will run your car through a series of checks and will instruct you on what you need to do as you go through the inspection. It's unlike any inspection I've been through in the US, but the video I'm showing you now should give you an idea of what some of the steps are like. Once you finish the inspection, you will pull out to one of a few parking spaces, get out of your car and approach the booth positioned at the end of the inspection area. Here you will give them the paperwork from the inspector. You will pay the fee and you will receive your inspection sticker. To sum up the inspection process, make an appointment online, show up and follow the employees as they prompt you, pay and leave. Oh, and if you are looking for how to make an appointment, Google ITV appointment and then the name of the autonomous region you are in. My region is Valencia, so I would put ITV appointment in Valencia, Spain. Now let's talk about what to do if you need a mechanic. I say this all the time, but Facebook groups for the city or town you live in are the easiest way to get recommendations. I am part of an expat Facebook group in my little town and I just ask the group anytime I need a referral. Trust me, just about any small town you might end up in will have a Facebook group of expats. If you have any other questions about buying a vehicle in Spain, be sure to leave a comment. I try to respond to most comments as soon as possible, so I will attempt to get back to you. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to join me every day where travel and adventure build financial freedom. I can't wait to see where your dreams will take you.